Hello there. I'm Scotty, and you're not. Uh, I'm recording this right after I finished watching. As you can tell, my face is a little red, and my eyes are a little raw. Uh, a lot of emotional stuff. Especially with this last last two episodes, four-hour movie thing. Uh... And admittedly, I wasn't too big when the when the season started out. I was a little iffy on where things were going because I was conflicted at the end where you know Joyce took Jonathan and Will and Elle and left for California, and so I was like, okay, but like, cause in my opinion, like the whole thing with Hop dying uh, was that like maybe she changed her mind and she'd want to stay in Hawkins because. He wanted her to stay, but she leaves anyway. And admittedly, after watching this season, I will say that it is still kind of a negative because to me, it serves only to separate. Do you know, every season we gotta have characters separated, doing their own things. And I, I do feel like they did, they, you know, they did it again. You got the thing in California with L, Mike, Joyce, or L, Will, Joyce, Jonathan, Jonathan's new friend Argyle comes into it, and, uh, they're there, and then in Hawkins, you, well, Mike goes to California to visit for spring break, and in Hawkins, we have Nancy, Steve, Robin, eventually Lucas, uh, Erica, Lucas's sister, Dustin, and new, new character, Eddie Munson, who will be Unfortunately, the this seems like they do this every season where there's a fan favorite character, a character that, you know, speaks to the fans, the fans love, becomes a favorite throughout the season, and then they kill it off. Season one, I really don't know. Was it Barb? I don't know if there really was one in that season. Barb, maybe? I don't know. I didn't care for Barb. And then season two, you had Bob. Season three, you had Alexi, and now you have Eddie. And I will tell you this, Eddie lasted longer than Alexi did. This, he, this fixture, much like Bob throughout the entire season, and dies in the finale. But, and I feel like more so than Bob, I think I connected with him more. I mean, I love Sean Astin, but this guy, I mean, he was metal, man. From the beginning, from the first scene you see Eddie, he's like, and you're just like, okay, this guy's going to kick ass. And he does. I also like they made Murray Bauman a uh, regular this season. Because there's an, the other thing is you have uh, Joyce and Murray realize that Hopper may still be alive in Russia. So there's kind of two plots where they are on their way to find him. Then you have Hopper in Russia. You know, in this Russian prison, Kamchatka makes a deal with this prison guard named Enzo to get him out, but Enzo's contact, Yuri, betrays them, and so they have to, you know, and then Joyce and Murray come to the rescue with Murray pretending to be Yuri because he's the only one that can speak Russian, and they find out that this Russian facility is not, oh, eventually we find out more, but they have a demigorgon, and they find out that they're, like, creating them. They got, like, Particles of the mind flare in there too. Then you have another story that branches off from the California one. See the California one. L is trying to deal with the fact she doesn't have powers anymore, and she gets picked on by a bully. And I've said this in numerous reviews for movies and TV shows. I hate the bully thing. It's only used to further stories. It's, it's, like, bullies aren't really necessary. I mean, you are creating this. There are bullies in real life, and I understand that. But you're creating a TV show, a way to escape from reality, and you put something from reality in it. Bullies are that thing that, like, there, there's a few things from reality you could put into a movie. That's fine. But bullies, for me, are the one thing that bugs me because it's bullies are only a plot device. And there's two different examples of that. You have... It was Angela, the one that bullies her, and 
rightfully so, Elle just plunges her in the head with a skate. I, she deserves it. I'm sorry. Cops are after her now, but who cares? She deserved it. I'm sorry. She did. And then later, and then in Hawkins, I guess I should say, there's this guy. What's his name? It's Tom Cruise looking motherfucker. Uh, Jason, who uh, his girlfriend gets killed by our main villain, which we'll talk about in a minute. And so he thinks that it's Eddie and the Hellfire Club who are just the like, D&D players, but he thinks it's a cult. And I am upset that that never actually gets resolved, that his innocence isn't like declared to the entire town. By the end of this, they still think Eddie is a cult leader. I mean, I guess, you know, Dustin talking to Eddie's uncle about how he sacrificed himself. That's something, but it doesn't prove to the whole town that he was innocent, though. That's the thing. They still think he's a murderer. But you have, uh, I lost track. We got Jason and his group. They essentially become a lynch mob and not, not so much things. You have a story for Lucas, sort of. And if, if I have to point out flaws, like, you don't need to give everyone a story. And if it felt like they took, like, oh, there were several characters that didn't have their own kind of plot points in the last season. And Lucas did. He had a thing with Max or whatever. They're not together anymore. He's playing for the basketball team. wants to be popular. By the end of the season, he's like, I don't want to be popular because I want to be a monster like you, Jason. And then you have Will, who whose plot line... It's not a bad plot line, but I, I, they're very subtle with it because, you know, I, I, I didn't catch it at first until I watched the kill counts from Dead Meat. But I do think now that Will might be gay. The way he always looks at, like, the way he was very excited to see Mike, like, he has a thing for Mike, and then Mike, of course, goes for his girlfriend. And he gets a little jealous. And he even when he's talking, like he's expressing himself to uh, Mike in this scene in the van where he's like saying, you know, you love someone, you do anything for them, you use a heart, all this stuff about him to L. It's really, I think, him getting his feelings out. And you can tell that's what they're going for because you have Jonathan in the front seat looking back, knowing what's going on. Knowing what his brother, you know, you know, there's a conversation later that they have. You know that Jonathan knows because it's his brother. You would know. So, yeah. But on the villain side of things, we have probably the most terrifying villain in Stranger Things history, Vecna. Once again, named after a uh, Dungeons and Dragons character, but this is Vecna. Which at first was described as the the five star general of the mind flare, but by the end of this, it is explained that he is actually the head honcho here, and far more than that, he is one. He is number one. He is you know she's eleven. Tali was eight. He's one, and we have flashbacks because L gets taken by Owens. To a secret test lab where we see Papa is still alive. It's never explained how he's alive. He's just alive. Uh, which has me a little bit iffy on his fate in this as well. Because we don't actually see him, the life go out of him like we do with other people. I'm just saying. But you have Vecna. And he's this terrifying character that feels like a combination of Freddy Krueger and Pinhead and just every dark like you know season two was dark season two is a little bit lighter this season is probably even darker than season two with that vecna feel that and this villain kind of leads us to henry creel or victor creel and which is played by robert england so not right up straight freddy krueger and we find out that victor creel moved into a house in hawkins hoping that his son would acclimate more but it didn't work, and his wife and kids ended up dead by some mysterious force, which we find out later was actually his son, Henry. 
Uh, we see flashbacks. We, if there was one thing I'm going to complain is that, like, I feel like Papa needs to have a little more nurturing side to him because he's like, refuses to let her go, saying that she's not ready, which by the end she even agrees, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but, like, she goes into this facility to train to get her powers back, and we get flashbacks. Revealing that Vecna was one, or Henry Creel, or Peter? I, they really didn't explain that enough. Because someone breaks in, like, the government comes in, or, like, a, the, the, an army, the military comes in, takes pot, uh, p p files on Peter. And I don't know if it's ever really explained if Peter and Henry are the same thing. I, I'm in this Stranger Things group now, where they keep slashing, you know, one, Henry, Peter... And I even asked the question, like, did they ever confirm they were the same person? Like, well, well, they took his files. Yeah, doesn't mean he's the same person, though. I, I really don't, I don't know. They tried to explain to me, and I just, I, I don't know. I wasn't picking up what they were putting down, if you know what I mean. Uh, I don't know. We in flashbacks. So, the beginning of this was a real, why? What the fuck? Head scratch moment, because it felt like retcon to me. Because... You have Papa Brenner with number, was it six? Ten. Ten? It was ten. And he's... <sighs> I wish they'd stay out of the fucking hallway. Let me tell you something. It is virtually quiet out there. But it seems like the moment I turn the camera on, people start yapping in the hallway. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm just saying. So anyway, uh... There's some kind of weird attack going on in the facility. And uh, Papa is knocked unconscious. And when he wakes up, 10 is dead. He goes out and he finds 11 standing there, bloody in the face. Supposedly responsibility that she killed all the other kids. Except for 8, who supposedly escaped before this. There's no mention of her. Well, there is some mention of her. Like, well, in, in, in escape or something. Mm. To reveal later... That there's that throughout these flashbacks, there's this orderly who's revealed to be one. He has this inhibitor in him that inhibits his powers because he's too powerful. And she forced him into the upside down. Now, let me get this straight because a lot of people seem to think the opposite. Eleven did not, I repeat, did not create the upside down. She pushed him into the upside down. Which made it look like Hawkins. Which some people have said, oh, well, you know, this facility was in Hawkins. It was in Hawkins. It had to be in Hawkins because he's pushed through. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe this facility wasn't in Hawkins. Because we get the one in season one flashbacks, that's when she opened it. And that's when it took. Because we find out later that everything inside Hawkins is from 1983. Which is kind of confusing seeing that Eddie's guitar is there. And we hadn't seen Eddie before this. I assume he was new. Maybe he was there the whole time in high school. Who knows? The boys are in high school now, by the way. Uh, but, um, yeah, so everything in Hawkins from 1983, which is where the first season started. And this is now 1986, which is... Which is three years ago, and they say it was two years ago that the incident happened, but no, it was three. It was three. 1986, so 1983. Everything's from 1983, diary, whatever. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so Vecna, what they call him, uh, is Henry Creel 11, we find, or, or 1, excuse me, Henry Creel 1, possibly Peter, I don't know. We find out that he was there and he conjured up or joined forces with the Mind Flare. It seems more like he conjured it up because it looks like a giant spider, as they comment later. And he, you know, has a thing for spiders. So it seems like he conjured it up. Which is confusing as to what that world was supposed to be. Maybe when he went through, he was fused with it. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. But, and so he, 
it, it turns out he was the one behind it the entire time, as confirmed by Will towards the end, where he's like, now I'm back in Hawkins, I can feel it. It was him the whole time. So it was Vecna is the one in charge, not the Mind Flayer. They were not the Demogorgons. Yeah. Um, and we jump through different scenarios trying to get away. They do bring back Susie for a cameo in the first episode, and then she's in another episode where they, Jonathan, Will, Mike, and Argyle show up to get help to try to find them, which is where they rescue her toward the end. And Brenner, the, because the military somehow finds it, you know, it's a top secret base in the middle of freaking nowhere. The military finds them, but Elle is able to save the day. But Brenner dies. I don't know if he's dead for good or not. I thought he was dead before. He was still alive. Who knows? He may show up again. They may bring back flashbacks, more flashbacks. Who knows? Who knows? He might be dead. I don't know. Owens, I think he's alive. We don't see him again, though, so the military may have him. That might be a plot point for next season. The military has him. We don't see him again after this point. Uh, so, let's talk a bit about the format they decided to go with. So, it's nine episodes. But, each episode is over an hour long. And in case of the last two, the, the episode eight was an hour and 22 minutes. The last one was two hours. Maybe it was an hour. It was an hour and something. The last episode was like a feature like movie. It was two hours and 22 minutes long. And for the most part, like the first half of the season, the first seven episodes, they all seemed to fit pretty cohesively. Worked like everything that was in them had a purpose. Like even though it was longer, it wasn't anything that stuck out to me as being unneeded. But then we get to these, and especially in the two hour and 22 minute episode, the last one, there seemed like there was, like, I don't know. It seemed like it was a regular length episode. Everything would have been done quicker. But because it was two hours and 22 minutes, it felt like that they had to stall. Like, for instance, Nancy, Robin, and Steve are going up the stairs to go burn Fecna. Now, if they just went up there and done it, it wouldn't be over. But, no. Because it's a two hour and 22 minute movie length episode, they get attacked and struck to the wall by the Mind Flare tentacles. And they're stuck there for 20 minutes while we follow L into Max's mind. Because Max is the final body he needs to claim. So it's explained that Fechner's plan is as he's killing these people, gates to the uh, the upside down are opened. So you know he killed Chrissy, the the, the jock's girlfriend. He killed uh, Nancy's assistant, Fred, and he killed uh, the other basketball player guy. The African American member of the jock team. It wasn't Lucas. I thought it was at first, but it wasn't. And each place they're killed, portal is open. And then at the end, they show like all the portals where they are. There's one in the middle of the road. That's where Fred was killed. And I thought about it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. So they drove all the way to Eddie's cabin. But if there was one in the middle of the road, presumably on the way to the cabin, why didn't they just go through that one? And I don't know. It can have something familiar, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, uh, they, res they say that you can rescue Max by playing a favorite song, which is the theme song of the season, I guess. Running Up Hill by Kate Bush, which has become a theme for this season because it's everywhere. Like, it's rejuvenated this song. Stranger Things has. You know? So. Yeah, it's everywhere. And it plays a big part. Like, you know, she puts it on. She listens to it. And she's able to free herself. But then at the end, it gets smashed thanks to Jason. And that was another thing. 
I, that I felt was padding for time because again, I feel like they would have been closer to competing their completing what they were doing if Jason and his people hadn't shown up to cause problems. And I was confused at first because I thought that all of them were on the upside down, but they were in the real house in the real world. I didn't think about that. I, I don't know why I thought they were enough. I don't know. But yeah, and Eddie, who has been running from everything, like he even explains when he saw what's happening to Christy, he ran because that's what he is. He stands up and he dies and they are... Uh, it's emotional. I cried a lot during this episode. Hap between happy and sadness, both. Meanwhile, in Russia, uh, Yuri, the peanut butter uh, pilot, peanut butter smuggler, um, sells them out. And so Joyce and Murray, like I said, they have to pretend, you know, he has to pretend to be Yuri. And get in there and rescue Hopper. There's this moment where they embrace because they finally meet each other. And Enzo, the pilot, becomes a part of like their group going forward, at least in this season. We don't see any more of him. I wish he, I think, I hope he would come back in the next season. He, I think he's going to stay in America. I hope. We don't see him come back, but. Also, L, they make a uh, century. A sensory depth uh, chamber out of a pizza freezer, a pizza dough freezer, which is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> oh, I should have mentioned in the flashbacks, they do this thing where they had like an a, a younger kid actress transposed with Millie Bobby Brown's face to make her look younger. And to their credit, they did use her all the time. There was, for most of the time when she's in the flashbacks, because it's in her head, because it's going through a machine called Nina, the Nina machine, and it's going through her head, she's as herself going through these memories and like in mirror reflections and stuff. And in real flashbacks, for us to see, it's the younger version. And I like how they did that. I also want to say that the acting in this season is fantastic from almost every single person from Argyle to Jonathan to Will to Hopper to L, everyone. Top notch acting. Fantastic. Millie Bobby Brown's performance is probably the best she's ever done in this series. Like, dude, she's fantastic. I will say, though, because they shave her head again for some discernible reason I can't figure out. Uh, and you know that she didn't shave her head this time. You can tell it's like a bald cap with a little hairpiece thing. Speaking of makeup effects, and I I followed David Harbor on on uh, face uh, Instagram as well as some others, and uh, he shared a picture that uh, for the flashbacks at the beginning of the season, he told the Duffer Brothers, uh, "You probably probably should have filmed before." We took a break because now I lost all this weight and I'm not going to look like I did in the flashback. So they put prosthesis on him, which apparently he doesn't like to wear. But you were Hellboy in that terrible Hellboy movie. Maybe that's why. I don't know. And once you know it's prosthesis, prosthetics, and you watch that, it looks like you got the peanut butter on his face. I'm sorry. It, uh, I was re I was I was watching the first episode or whatever that second first second episode whatever it was they showed a flashback I'm like, yeah, yeah. But once you know that it's 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 prosthetics, yeah, it, it, it sticks out like a sore thumb once you know what it is. But if you weren't aware, we well, are now because I told you. But I'm just saying, yeah, uh, but yeah. The finale of this was pulse pounding like. Eddie dies, and then you think Max is going to die, but she's in a coma now. They do do this weird thing where she, like, El touches her, like she's going to bring her back. Then it cuts to two days later. Like, two days later? What do you mean two days later? What happened? Apparently Max is still alive, and they, according to Lucas, like, her heart stopped. She was dead for, like, a minute. And then she was alive again, but she wasn't, you know, she's in a coma. And they even show... L tries to go into her mind. There's nothing there. 
There's nothing there. I thought they were going to show that Vecna was in there. And I do think they cheated at the sending here with Vecna. Because Vecna loses. He is burnt to a fucking crisp. All right? He, I mean, he falls out the window. He's not there. He pulls the Michael Myers. Which, again, we see Eddie wearing a Michael Myers mask in this. Max is Michael Myers mask. They're like, do you have, like, a face cover or something? And it's... They even do the sting. When he pops his head out. I thought that was pretty cool. We're wearing a Michael Myers mask. Uh, it's the one she wore in season two. She still has it, I guess. Uh, enough, here's a plot point I want to point out that I didn't really understand. And I guess they try to explain it with her. But, like, uh, a lot of people have tried to say that the, the guidance counselor was in on it. I don't think so. At least I didn't confirm it here. Because, like, a couple of the people that were killed were her patients. Uh, but it's people that have grief or guilt over something that happened. With Fred, he was responsible for an accident. I don't, like, something with her, I think her dad's death. Chrissy's dad's death. And with uh, Max, it was Billy. But, in my opinion, and no offense to the writers of this, it didn't make any sense. And even what she says at the end doesn't make any sense either. Because he treated her like shit. Like he treated it like... You could say oh, he was protecting her, trying to make her safe. Yeah, but from Lucas, because he was black. He was... Billy was not a good guy. And I kind of take back what I said in my review for season three about Billy sacrificing himself. I've been reading stuff in the group and I've come to realize maybe it wasn't a sacrifice. Because if you think about it, and I, I don't know who to give credit to, so if you, you know, come in to me, if, if you'd want to post this in the Stranger Things group on Facebook, then not credit to you. But Billy was not doing it to save Max, he was not doing it as a sacrifice. He did it because he's Billy. Because the mind flare was in his mind, and so he was fighting back because, you know, it's the Billy way. You fuck with me, I'm gonna fuck with you, and you're gonna you're gonna pay for it. That's what it was. It wasn't no it was revenge. It wasn't, you know, defending your sister or anything. They did have document Daker. I guess is his name. I thought it was Dakri. They had Dacre Montgomery come back to play. They have cameos in this. I think one was actually reused footage from when he was in that uh, sauna thing. But yeah, that, that is a little questionable. But then in the end, she's like, you're right. Uh, I wanted him to die. And I'm like, well, then why are you grieving over him? You know? I guess she tried to explain it. I, I guess I didn't get it. If she tried to, I don't know. I really don't know. But, yeah. And so, like I said, though. So, Vecna loses. Because she dies. And the portals start to open. But she's brought back to life. Right? No, no, no. They, okay, here we go. They stop Vecna. They burn him. Right? But then Max dies after that. After they burned him. And all of a sudden, that still works. Even though... Technically, he didn't kill her. She died from the... Like, the trauma of the bones and stuff. But he didn't finish the job. So I don't think it should count. And then, even then, she's not dead. She's in a coma. She's still alive, technically. So you think the portals would have closed back up again because it didn't it shouldn't have worked. Like it shouldn't even open to begin with. It shouldn't have worked. I'm just saying. Shouldn't have worked. But it did. And this brings me to the most confusing thing about the end of this. So it ends with everyone getting back together, they're hugging. Uh, Ellen Hopper get to see each other again. And they're like, Oh, you lost weight. And then we have the same haircut now and all that stuff. And it ends with, because they, they, they call it an earthquake because people are oblivious and they're still looking for Eddie, even though he's not. And we have this conversation with Dustin and Eddie's uncle where he basically tells him he, you know, he saved people that night. And so everybody starts looking at the sky and we find, we see the particles coming through 
because now the upside down and the real world are coming together and it's like this big gap coming in and they all stand in there as it ends. They're standing there watching it as it ends. And the biggest confusion I have from this is that it's been said that there's going to be a time jump after this season. Like a substantial time jump. Not like a few months. Like years. How do you time jump when the upside down is bleeding through? See, a lot of people were speculating that L was going to have to close the gate on the inside. Which, once we found out, once you start thinking about, well, there's more than one gate close the gates from the inside and trap herself there. I was thinking, shit, they're going to do that. She's going to be trapped in the upside down for but five years or so. And then something's going to happen where she's released five years later. You know, they're going to like go forward for a few years to acclimate the actor's age because some of these, you could tell, like... The actor who plays Jonathan actually to play Nancy. Nancy, I think they're close to thirty or something because they're I mean, they're in their mid twenties, but you can tell they're in their mid twenties, and they don't look like nineteen year olds here. I'm just saying. And then you have Steve, who's the actor Joe Carey. He's nearly thirty, and for the most part, you can't tell. But towards the end, I noticed like his eyes. Is I'm like, oh, he looks kind of. Eh, you know? And of course, the younger actors are growing up. Like, they're supposed to be 14. They don't look 14. I mean, there have been comments, like, they did it with Harry Potter, they're growing older. Somebody did, like, the face app thing where they aged all of them to, like, they're 60 years old or something. Yeah, they, they are, they do age fast, kids, they grow they're all over 18 now. Uh, with Millie Bobby Brown and uh, Noah Schnapp being the youngest two, I think. I think Noah's grown up. He's a tall fucker. But, like, yeah, they've all grown. Like, Lucas has, like, flat top. And, yeah, they've all grown. Uh, but, yeah, so trying to acclimate those ages. But with the way this season ended, I don't know how they would... Do a time jump because you think if within five years, like the whole thing would have seeped through, or at least most of it. Like, I really don't know. I don't really know what other. There's not and then, unlike other seasons. Like, this is a big cliffhanger moment, but there's no little plot threads. You know what I mean? Like in season one, you had Will coughing up the the demo slug. End of season two, you had um, well, what was it? It's, I've watched all these in succession, so I should know. But at the end of season two, you had uh, no, nope, can't remember anything. Oh, you had the mind flare, you know, showing that mind flare was still alive and still wanting revenge, right? End of season three, uh, there was there was a sense that there was, that it wasn't over yet. They had the Denim Gorgon in Russia, and they mentioned the American. So you knew something was still going to happen. You know it wasn't over yet. So yeah, here you got an ominous bleeding through to our universe that. I don't know how you time jump from that, though. I mean, the Double Brothers wanted to time jump after season one. But decided against it. So, I don't know. Maybe they changed their minds. I, I really don't know how... To, and you can't discuss it in a group because they have it... Uh, no posting. Admins only for a week. Which is smart. Because other groups don't do that. Like, the DC groups, they give you 24 hours. The... Freaking MCU group doesn't even have anything. Which is why I get spoiled all the time. I knew about the Illuminati before I watched the damn movie. You know, I knew about certain aspects of No Way Home before I watched the damn movie. 
because people won't shut the fuck up. And unfortunately, James Bond group, the James Bond is the same thing. But in this day and age where, you know, the internet plus, you know, you can't, I can't get to a movie theater in time. And this is Netflix, but you know. Overall, though, I did enjoy this season. This season was probably the most emotional. And that's just in the last two and a half hours emotional, man. I'm drained. I'm emotionally drained. My eyes hurt. My my eyelid, my face hurt from crying so much. Both happy and sad. I cried so much, man. And I'm glad I got a tissue box because I was sitting there. I went to blow my nose before I even started, before I just started watching it. And I blew, I went to my nose, I'm like, oh, this is empty. I better grab a box because I'll probably need these. And I did. And so I warn you, if you sat through this, well, I should have, I should have said at the beginning, but tissues, they're necessary. Trust me. But yeah, uh, this was pretty good. It started out wonky for me, but it got better, I think. I don't know if it was, I really liked season three with the whole, you know, the never ending story and the mall feel, the real pure 80s feel. And that continued here. Uh, this show has has won me over, man. Because when I first watched it a couple of years ago, the first season, I'm like, okay, this is this is this is decent. This is fine. And then watching through this, I said this before. We watched this season one, like, okay, season one's good. It's fine. Season two, oh, this is getting better. This is alright. Season three, it's like the show. I love this show. And this solidifies that. I love this show. Can't wait with to see what season five holds. There's gonna be a time jump, what they're gonna do. I don't know. Hopefully, I'll get your hair back. Hopefully, Hopper gets some hair back. Mia. Yeah. How are they going to explain Hopper being alive, by the way? They buried him. They, they sort of... They had a funeral, Joyce said. But, uh, yeah. So, what are your thoughts on Stranger Things? Stranger Things Season 4. Uh, then in the comments below, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you are wondering why I... Like... Well, one... If you're wondering why I didn't review these separately, well, one, I just got done watching the first part of season four. Like Monday, I think was the last time was when I finished Monday Sunday night. It was Sunday night. I got home and I watched it. Then I finished it. Then so I'm a little behind. I mean, I'll just I I didn't like other people posting. Oh, season one, season four, part one review. I'm like. No, just wait and review the whole thing. I know this was like four hours almost, but yeah. this was, I don't know, the creepiest season for me, and I enjoyed it. So thank you for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.